everybody, welcome back. I thought this week I would talk about some cameras. Some of them I have used in the past three, four decades, and other ones I bought just for collector's items, but I thought I'd show them anyway because I'm starting to get things kind of better organized. Uh, the first one I found is a newer camera. It's an Olympus D370, a 1.3 megapixel digital camera. This was my first digital camera. I got this from my sister. Uh, I used it quite often. It was actually a, a very good serviceable camera for 1.3 megapixel. And that it was, it was new and, and a new format for me, so it was kind of exciting. I had this at the reformatory. I was up on about the second or third level cleaning something and it fell out of my pocket. And if there was anything it could find between the third level and the ground, it found it. It bounced, I don't know how many times. And I looked down after it finally stopped and there was pieces, parts kind of rolling around and, and this was kind of still spinning a little bit. And I got it and put it back together best I could. This comes off if you're not careful. And outside it actually took great pictures, but inside the pictures were terrible. So this resulted in me getting a good Nikon camera, which I'm very happy about. But I didn't know where this was. I wasn't sure if I still had it and I came across it and found it. thought I'd show you guys because I haven't always had a great camera. But for what this was and at the time the technology of 1.3 megapixel actually got some pretty decent results. From that camera, another one that I used is an old 110 Pentax camera. I'm trying to think, this is an Auto 110. It's a little guy. Looks like this. I guess it's a, a miniature camera. It has a 24 millimeter lens on it, but you can switch the lenses. You can go all the way up to a 70 millimeter telephoto lens for that little camera. There's also an 18 millimeter wide angle lens that you can put on there if you would like, and a 50, miller, uh, 50 millimeter telephoto lens, which was also available. It came with an auto film advancer, and it also had a flash unit you could put on. So by the time you put it all together, it was almost the size of a 35 millimeter camera, but you were taking pictures that were the quality of a 110. So it wasn't bad. I, I did get some nice pictures from this, and it was nice carrying it to certain places where I didn't want to expose my other camera to conditions and I took this and still got some pretty good shots. So that, that's kind of an interesting setup for that one with the different lenses. Another 110 film camera that I got, I, I think this was a giveaway at Burger King of all places. It's an Argus 20 and the film cartridge actually goes right in the back of the camera so it sticks out. And you pop this up and that would be your, your viewfinder, and you could shoot a roll of 110 film, and I think this, this wasn't that good at all, but it was better than nothing in some places, and it is a novelty of the thing, it's kind of goofy looking. I also have a pen, ballpoint pen, that has a shutter on the top, and right above the clip, there's the lens, and this was digital also, and I think to recharge it, there's a USB port that you stick into your computer and it will recharge. So again, a novelty kind of thing. If you want good pictures, this isn't what you're going to use to take them with, but it may be better than nothing or if you're up to no good. Um, that was something that was kind of interesting to me. And another thing you could get was a cigarette lighter, but it's not a cigarette lighter, it's a camera. So you've got your lens in the front, you've got your shutter up top, you push that down and get your your pictures, it's all digital. I was thinking that popped out, but I don't think it does. Ah, nope, it doesn't. You have an on-off switch on the bottom, and you have a place to recharge the batteries. So that was kind of interesting. And again, the pictures with this aren't all that great, but it's kind of a goofy thing that I kind of liked. Uh, those are the cameras that I've actually used. The ones that I didn't use are some, there's some advertising things. 
This one looks like a box of Velveeta macaroni and cheese dinner, but it's actually a 110 camera. Take the picture and advance the film. I, I've never used this, so I don't know what kind of quality you would get. And another one, I think this is from 1998 or late 90s, mass produced. It's a, a Budweiser camera. You pop that up, it says smile. And this was actually a 35 millimeter camera. That if you did that and popped open the back, there was a place for your film. There was no flash, so I'm thinking it's best used outdoors. But that was your your camera. This is your shutter right up here by the, the side of the can. Take the picture. And then on the opposite side, you have a uh, exposure meter so that if you advanced the film, it would make that meter go and it would tell you how many exposures you've taken. So kind of an ingenious thing. doesn't say 12 ounces on it anywhere, but it doesn't have 12 ounces of anything in it. It's a camera. So that was kind of neat. Never used that one. This one's a digital camera. It's actually a pair of binoculars that has a camera in it. And I think I did try this and I wasn't really impressed with it. So I lied. I thought I had taken, uh, I thought I'd shown you all the, the cameras that I used and then I said I didn't use any of these, but this one I did use and I wasn't, wasn't that impressed with it. But it's, it's a good pair of binoculars if, uh, if you need binoculars, they're okay. I like the, uh, I have a Nikon binoculars that are much nicer. And then I have some, some other ones, uh, Minolta and Tasco that are much bigger, that are more, more of what I would have used at work. Some of the other smaller cameras that I have, I think this one was made in Russia. Somebody who knows more than I do, you can comment down below. It's Kiev, K-I-E-V, and it's a Bera 2, B-E-R-A 2, and it has a, a setting dial on the top, little uh, chrome thing handle, strap, strap, we'll go with strap, but you open it up, you would look through here, see out there, that's your shutter release, and then to advance the film, you close it and open it again. And with the size of this, you could take this, put a little hole inside of a cigarette pack, and without the strap on it, you could put it in there, close the lid, and I mean, obviously you'd have to be, you'd have to be doing that every time you took the picture, but it's a good way to conceal it. These I think are from the 60s. And again, if somebody knows more about this, please comment down below. Or knowing that uh, it's a BERA2 made by KIEV, Maybe you can do some online research that I should have done and find some more out about it. Another one about the same size, that's a Minolta 16. Almost the same kind of principle. It slides out, it's got the shutter, you take the picture, advance it. You've got a couple of your settings on the side. I'm not sure what kind of film this takes, but this one's in pretty nice shape. And all of these, I think, are still available on eBay. I'm not sure what the prices are. And that's got the, uh, like, a leather strap on it. Then this one is a Raleigh? Rolly L, no, I lie. R-O-L-L-E-I-16, made in Germany. And I'm not sure if this is what Kolchak had in the Night Stalker, but same kind of, same kind of principle, where you take the, uh, you advance it, I don't know, again, I bought this as a, as a display collectible piece because it does have a little winding thing. But I like the, the sub-miniature, I think is what they call the small cameras. And then this one is a Mamiya, Mamiya, M-A-M-I-Y-A 16, automatic. Pop up the little viewfinder and take the picture and then you advance it with this wheel here. It's got your... your camera settings on the top, little door to close off to save the, the lens, and you've got a couple different filters that, that will slide across. But these are just 
miniature machines that are just really well made. It's almost like having a, a finely made clock with all the little moving parts and everything that are in these. There we go. Can you focus? <sighs> then we have this little guy, which is a minute 16. I don't know what this is, but you push that and the viewfinder pops up. I think this is your shutter over here. And then it also, it has quite an impressive looking flash attachment that you can put on it. And then I also have the original box, but there's, there's no instructions or anything in there. And I don't know what kind of film that would take either. Put those over there. And then this little guy, if you ever bought a comic book, probably in the 60s, maybe even the 50s, there was always an, there was always an ad in there for this little miniature camera. That's actually where this came from. Looks like a little 35 millimeter camera. I think they came in different colors. But you would drop the film in there. There was your take up spool. And then you'd have to, I think, mail the film in and they would develop it and send it back. That's kind of cool. I like that. He's a little guy. But then, spy cameras, like the Rolls Royce of spy cameras, is the Minox. And the Minox was, I think, originally designed in the mid 30s, but it was mass produced. They had three different models, I think, an A, B, and C, that were produced between 1958 and 1969. And I think it was very popular in Germany, the UK, the US, probably just about any Eastern country. I think it was made, I want to say Romania. I could be wrong. Um, <clears throat> probably am. But it uh, looks like this. If you've ever seen James Bond, I think he had one. It's got a, uh, it's an aluminum body. It's a uh, selenium electric or uh, light meter, electric eye I guess they call it, uh, but what you do is you would you would set your what you were going to photograph, push down on the button which would lock the needle on the light meter, I don't know how well you can see that, then you would adjust your your camera setting to the line that correspond with where the needle stopped and then you'd set your distance and then you could take your picture and you would advance the picture by closing and opening. You would push down on this and open it up and that would get you to where the film canister would be. You open it up and there's a place for a little film cartridge. You get the film like that from the store this would be a 36 exposure. You can get black and white in color. They're still available. It's about $21 a roll. You pop that open. The film comes out. It almost looks like something you put contact lenses in. And you would drop that in there and close it up. And you'd be ready to shoot. They don't weigh much. They have uh, they have chains attached to them. That's kind of a a quick disconnect with the chain. But having said that, I probably won't be able to do a a quick disconnect on it. And the chain comes off. You'll see these little. I think they're called bullets. There's some here. You can see three. Hopefully, maybe these three little things and, and the chain is I think 24 inches long and there's one two three four four of those little bullet things are called and then you have each end for six six different lengths that's on here and what those spaces correspond to is when you have the chain on the camera it's a focal point with your different distances to your setting up here and that would tell you how far you needed to be or it's an infinity they also have a bulb setting and a T setting 
which is time. They're basically the same thing. Bulb and time are, are great settings if you want to do nighttime photography or if you're in very low light with something that isn't going to move a whole lot, you can use those settings. Bulb, you push it down and the shutter stays open as long as you hold the shutter down. And then when you release it, that will release the shutter. Time setting is you push the shutter down and you can let go and the shutter is going to remain open until you physically push the shutter again and then it's going to release and uh, you get your picture. Also there's a, a little slide thing here that has two, two different filters. One is for pretty much a, a toner and the other one is if you're in very bright light conditions you can slide that over and it'll cover the, the lens with a almost like a pair of sunglasses and you can take some settings and get a better picture and as long as you're ready to shoot you'll see a little little dot in there maybe but when you take the uh, when you take the picture that dot disappears uh, these are really cool and again this is the like the the, uh, the one that everybody wants to collect they come in this little case and then the chain has a thing you can hook onto a button or keep from losing it because I would imagine you probably lose that pretty easy but it also has not only is it functional as far as you don't want to lose it but it also is functional because it's got these little bullet things on it you can help figure out the distance um, along with this which also makes it kind of cool there's a ton of stuff that they've made for these cameras. Uh, if you have an old, I think it might be the A. I don't know if I have one of those around here or not. I think the B and the C models have the actual uh, light meter built into them. But the A did not have one. It's got the, it's got the slide that you can change the things, but it does not have the light meter. Same kind of thing, though where you advance the film and, and do that. And there's a counter in there that, that will tell you what exposure you're on. But they also have a light meter that you could get for those. And it would also come in a holder that would match the, the case. And again, it's got the little thing that you would press in and turn and it would lock in place. And that would help you keep track of that particular accessory and not lose it. And it would also have the, uh, the bullet things on it for the measuring. So you'd have that. And then you also have about three different generations of flash units. One that you would have would go on the camera. You only put it on one way. That would go there. You would slide this up, which is a little reflector. Then you take one of these little flash cubes, flash, not cube, flash bulb, pop it in there, and then you would have a, a flash. That was, I think, maybe the first generation of uh, a flash for a flash accessory for this because it should just should just slide right off like that so that was the I think the first generation and then what what would happen is you would get done taking the picture and you'd probably take this and throw it on the ground but I'd have four flashes for that or the next generation was again came in a a regular case you would put this on the camera and then you took the flash cube the actual cube remember these things and you get done with these and throw them on the ground too um, and you pop that in there and then you'd have a uh, you'd have a flash that you could take and then it would rotate you get four different flashes from the one cube and you take it off I just threw them back in the camera bag and either took them apart just because it was kind of fun or threw them out when you were supposed to. Let's see if I can take this off better than I took the other one off. I did. 
and then you had the latest one where you could slide that on and I think it was actually a, a hot shoe where you could put an external flash on it I think so that was the different flash units that are available for these cameras you also had this is kind of cool kind of spy stuff this is just a clamp but you would put your camera let me figure this out here yeah that's better put that camera in there got a little dial that you would twist it would lock it into place you would open it up it's got a little cable it's detachable you put that in there after you you put it in there and then you take your pair of binoculars I don't have my good binoculars here you put that on there tighten up the clamp and now you've turned it into a telephoto lens so to speak camera and then you take this take the picture so that was a pretty ingenious design really to get something that, that would work it, it, I forgot you'd, you'd have to set it to there's an infinity setting oops already on infinity I already knew what I was going to do so there's the infinity setting put this back in the case this came in a box and this is all really nice I don't know if it's machined or what it is but it's all nice stuff it's not cheap they did a really good job of of making these you have that you have a different viewfinder back in the old days the original cameras used to hold them here you'd look down and you'd be able to see out there that's pretty much what this does instead of holding it up And looking looking through it you would put this on and then you can hold it in front of you I can look down here but I can see out there so I would see what I'd want to take a picture of take the picture and then be able to advance it probably didn't see any of that did you I don't know you got the idea though but caught it on the first hop not bad that's what that does you have a, another adapter that you can put on the camera. This will lock in the camera and then you can put it on any tripod. It's got a, uh, a mount for the tripod. So that's kind of nice. Then you also have a right angle viewfinder. And then instead of taking a picture like that that you think I'm taking a picture of the camera it's actually going to take a picture of what's to my right it's got a little mirror so when I look through here I'm not seeing the camera I'm seeing the kitchen over that way so if you wanted to take a picture of somebody over there but you wanted them to think you were taking a picture of something over there you pop this on take the picture they thought you were taking a picture that way but you were actually taking their picture Kind of sneaky. That's all that is, just a little little mirror thing. You get that. This is an aftermarket adapter. This is not a Minox. Everything else is all Minox. But it's just a, um, a timer, a self timer. You can put that on one of those adapters and set it for anywhere from a couple seconds to I think 30 seconds and it will count down and it will take your picture. So that is useful or handy. You have a little loop, kind of like the jewelers use. Very interesting. Because uh, there's little negatives. You got film that's that size. It'd be kind of hard to see. But if the film is, if you got a negative, you can put that through here and be able to look at it and see what the negative is. Pretty sure. There's also another thing that you can get that actually helps you develop your uh, Minox film. I don't have one of those. And with, with the cost of a film cartridge being $21, even for 36 exposure, uh, with my digital cameras, I'm not so sure I'm going to run out and get that and then 
have to pay for shipping and get them developed and pay for that. And, uh, but I just think this is uh, this is really great stuff. Uh, they also have a copy stand, which is what this thing's been. Looks like something you'd see at Cedar Point. But you put the camera in here, it would face down this way, and if you had a document or a photo, you could do like an almost one-to-one -one picture of it. Uh, and again, this is, this would be where you would where you would want to. Um, that's not going to cooperate. There it goes. You lock that in place. But anyway, you get the idea. And then when you're done, you, know, you go into the uh, the top secret document area. Then you have this big stand that you set up in, in a matter of seconds. It'll probably take me minutes. There we go. And then after you had that big giant stand, then the camera, the chain, and the stand can all easily go into a pocket and nobody would ever know you had any of that stuff. So there's that. And then there's a very ingenious tripod. Or a monopod if you wanted to do that but you take one out put that in take the next one out put that in you'd have that adjustment there and if you need to use one of the attachments where it's going to block the shutter you can open this up and you have a shutter release cable and again once you got done with all this stuff you put it all back together, drop it in the case, put it in your pocket, nobody would even know. So the Minox camera and all the accessories, again I think these are, are just, uh, these are really cool. So that's about it I think for the camera, oh, no I lied, I have one more. A reusable 35mm action packed action-packed race cameras black and white or color photos a carry strap fixed focus reusable camera and this is a division of action which makes the diecast cars I think I got this at a Ames department store in Ohio back probably 30 years ago uh, it's NASCAR approved it cost $9.99 at the time, but it was a Dale Earnhardt Sr. camera. Do not load or unload film in direct sunlight. For best results, have your subject at least a distance of four feet from camera. Well, there you have it. This is not a toy. Not recommended for children under six years of age just so you know but that was the Dale Earnhardt number three GM plus camera and I never even opened it so now I think that's it so thanks for joining me I hope everyone's well go out and take pictures have fun practice get good stay safe be healthy and I'll see you next time bye